I'll give this a shot. Meaning, I hope this is all set up right. So, there's a book I want to talk about for Horror Mayhem that I've got on my Kindle, as you can see here. I assume you can see the mouse, I don't know. This is what I paid for it, 99 cents. I bought it in 2020. It's called, now, there, of course, there's a lot of books like this out there that you, a lot of choices on this. This one's called The Big Book of the Masters of Horror, Weird, and Supernatural Short Stories. Look at this page count, 18,702 pages, which is probably more like 30,000 pages, really, uh, because these these ebook page counts are, are way off. It's either 9,000 or, or 36,000. I don't remember which way it goes, but they're way off. Anyway, big book of the master for 120 authors and 1,000 plus stories. I've been reading on this. You know, I suppose if I just had this on my Kindle, I could read for the next year on it. Uh, this is the, the, the browser app version of, of the Kindle. Uh, let's see if I can find the table of contents, because there was some good stuff in here that I found. But look how much stuff is in here. Um, I'm going to go to the ones I read most recently. Uh, were these two writers? I start with the K's for some reason. Kipling and Kuttner. Kuttner. This and this shows a good example of of what's in here. It's like all the tons and tons of the free Gutenberg Library uh, Victorian ghost stories and nineteenth uh, century ghost stories, plus a bunch of uh, pulp stuff that's in the public domain. Henry Kuttner was a, a pulp science fiction writer. Rudyard Kipling. You know who that is, and. Somebody put a lot of work into this giant ass file, that's for sure, because each one of them, it's well organized. The each each one has a little capsule sort of bio of the of the person, of the writer, and then an individual list of their short stories. So a lot of these giant Giant, giant, giant compilations can be really hard to navigate. This one's not so bad because you go to the main uh, contents, you click on the name of the author, and, and you know, it's basically, it's a pretty simplistic bio. It's probably taken from Wikipedia or whatever. Then a list of the stories that they have here for that person. You can see there's a lot of Kipling in here. I think I read all these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, this is the best one, They. This is a great short story. It's probably the best short story I've read in this collection yet. I was just going to do a review of a certain few uh, stories. I had never heard of this. Apparently, it's a very important story in the uh, work of Kipling. It's a creepy horror story. This guy is It's uh, later in Kipling's career, but... Uh, Around the time the autom automobiles came in, it's not set in India like many of his stories. It's set in the English countryside. This guy is driving around. He goes to a house. He meets a, a, a blind woman who's got strange stuff going on in her house. He sees children walking around. He thinks other people can't see them or what's going on. I highly recommend that story. It's very powerful. It has a lot of autobiographical significance, I guess. Um, according to what I've read about it online, but I just browsed it back. I don't know what that's going to do. Okay. This is a bunch of other crap I'm trying to read. Um, this book has everything. This book has M.R. James. It, it has the M.R. James. I'm not as used to that. I don't really use this um, browser app very much for reading, so I'm not really sure how to na navigate around here, but let's go see what I can get here. Uh, I'm not going to go on much longer, but it's got everybody. Look at this. Ar Arthur Bacon. Lovecraft. Not all Lovecraft. It's got like four or five stories, I think. Uh, it's got everything you're going to need to be well-versed in the history of horror fiction. It's got probably every writer that H.P. Lovecraft mentions in his long essay on survey of horror fiction. You can see there's quite a lot of H.R. Macon here, These The White People is one of his most famous stories. It's got M.R. James in here, too. M.R. James wrote, ah, I did it again, Jesus Christ. Uh, waiting for it to load. It's got 
Where are we going? I'm looking for, now I forgot the name. Who's the writer who wrote uh, Whistle and I'll Come to You, which is one of the best Victorian ghost stories? M.R. James. Okay, as far as I know, there's 33 total ghost stories. 32 or 33, something like that. I looked it up again just before doing this. Um, you know, there's a very famous one, Count Magnus. They're all in here. This is all you need. Every single one's in here. I, I got rid of a lot of my duplicate free crap. I did it again. Uh, just because I have this one big uh, volume, it can be hard to index for for um, for your Kindle. It can take a lot of battery to index this the first time. And the ash tree, that's a good one. Count Magnus is a great one. Where's the one? Number 13 is good. Most of these I've happened to have read before, but where's... Oh, you know what? Maybe they're not all in here because I don't see... Wh oh, oh, which one I'll come to you, my lad. That is a great horror story. That is one of the scariest stories. And there's actually a great uh, dramatic version of it from, from the old days BBC with like... Uh, I don't want to say who the actor is. I'll probably get it wrong. I'm gonna. I'll do a link to it someplace. I'm sure I can find it online. I'll link to it in a different, in a different video. Um, so these things, you know, there's Clark Ashton Smith is in here. Uh, not everything, but a bunch of them. There's some Robert Howard in here. Robert Howard's uh, horror stories are in here, plus a couple King. Call stories, which are pretty horror adjacent. Pigeons from Hell, that's probably his most famous straight horror story. It's got the Shadow Kingdom, which uh, is a great uh, King Cole story, which has to do with hauntings and stuff. Um, it's got some unique stuff. Let's see what they have by Google. Okay, it's got the overcoat, which is excellent. The Vi, which was made into a movie in the 60s, which is, it's, so it doesn't have a lot. Uh, it's got Henry James. It's got Henry James, but not Turning the Screw. I guess that was too long, even for this giant collection. It's got the Jolly Corner. That's a pretty good one. This is a really stupid story. It reminds of certain old clothes. A really dumb uh, ghost story. Uh... Sir Edmund Orrin, I remember, as being pretty good. Um, Owen Wingrave, some of these I don't remember as well. It's not like I've read every single thing in here. There's tons of stuff I have not read. Let's see what they have by Hodgson. These are all short stories, so... Uh, I haven't read any of those, I don't think. Let's see what they have by Hawthorne. I See, I could go through this all day and just see what stories I remember... And uh, which one's Rappuccini's daughter? That's an excellent story. Um, there's one. Do they have the? What's the really famous? Uh, I don't think they have it here. Am I thinking of the right writer? Young Goodman Brown. Is that in here? Or maybe it's on the next page. Because uh, I don't want to end up going back to the Young Goodman Brown. There it is. It's probably the most famous early American horror story. So creepy. It'll creep you out. Read that one for sure. So you just, if you have this, you could just play around with it forever. And that's what I've been doing a lot of. It's not really helping me on my 100 book challenge because I will never get through this book. And I'm just wondering, I'll put it out there for people who are still watching. Is this still recording? Yeah, I guess it is. Uh, if you have any other big, uh, giant, everything but the kitchen sink um, anthology, if you've read this one or if you've found any others, ebook e giant anthologies, of course, there's Delphi editions and many others. I'm just wondering if people have one they like better than this. Or if they're interested in this. But yeah, 99 cents and you can read horror forever. How do I stop it?
This is the end of the video.